Hey guys, so for this video, I want to demonstrate knuckle pulling for you. And we're gonna be pulling a cylinder, which means that the bottom of the pot is flat and the walls are straight. Uh, you can use the knuckle pulling technique for pulling a cylinder and it works much, much better than the sponge pulling technique. It's more efficient, it moves clay more quickly, and I highly recommend learning it. So um, we're gonna get started right away. I wanna talk about hand position quickly. So I'm going to use the middle and ring finger of my left hand on the inside of the wall and my knuckle, which looks about like this, sort of the pad right here, on the outside of the wall. And the most important thing here is to realize that these are not um, directly across from one another. They are offset. So the inside fingers are above and the knuckle is below and pretty much they stay that way. They, they, you push out, you come up underneath, and then actually they draw together just at the rim, at the very end of the pull. Um, but think of it as being pretty much offset through most of the pull. Pulling by squeezing is really inefficient means of moving clay or thinning the wall or gaining height. Thinning by uh, like this sort of offset lateral stretching motion um, is much more efficient and it puts less torque on the wall. So you're gonna you're not gonna get so much twisting by doing this because you're really not like pulling on the wall as it's trying to turn. You're more like causing it to travel through a path that's a little longer than as if you were just squeezing. And I'll um, demonstrate that more clearly. Okay, so first thing we need to do is add a little water. I'm just gonna use my sponge. I like to just run a little water down the interior wall and the exterior wall just a little and then pick it up on the back. Okay, so for my hand position uh, for my first pull, um, it's gonna look like this. So I've got my middle and ring finger on my left hand, knuckle on my right hand, and I'm touching kind of right where my thumb and first finger come together on my right hand with my left hand thumb, just like that. I've got my um, forearm of my right arm down on my leg and sometimes I'll do the same with my left forearm or elbow uh, like this. Um, that starts to become difficult once the cylinder gets a little taller but it's a good idea to kind of be as stable and braced as possible. So okay what I'm going to do here is just push out from the inside and follow up on the outside with my knuckle. So you can see the wall grew a little bit, and it came in slightly. Um, a really efficient pull accomplishes two different things. It makes the wall taller, but it also draws it in. Because if you pull a cylinder by moving straight up, the wall will actually start to flare. So like pulling straight, you're gonna get a flared form, and then you have to deal with that flared form, right? If you want a cylinder and you have a flared form, you have to collar and collaring and repulling, and it's just like a lot of wasted effort. So if instead your right hand thumb tracks on a slightly inward angle as you're moving up, you will end up with the cone that you're after. Okay, so for this pull, I'm gonna add a little bit of water running down the wall. I use my sponge and I just run the water right down the wall and then pick it up immediately on the bat. And I do the same thing on the inside. So um, adding water that way allows you to um, uh, only add what you need here on the surface. So first thing we need to do here is um, take my left hand and push out. So the wall right now is a cone. So I'm going to push out so it'll be like a cone with a roll on the bottom. Then I'm going to take my knuckle and pull that roll all the way up to the top. So you can see I'm pushing out. See the roll start to happen here. I'm going to come up underneath it. Let it dry out a little bit. I'm going to come up underneath that roll the roll is made by my inside fingers. My knuckle is just correcting. And I'm coming right up to the rim and I'm gonna pause here. See how my fingers have come together at the rim? So they were offset like this. Now at the rim they're together. Also very important when you're at the end of the pull here that you pause and then gently release pressure. If you release pressure all at once, it can set your rim off center. Just taking my sponge on a stick which is just made from a chopstick, a rubber band, and a, and a um, synthetic sponge. And I'm just grabbing the, any excess water out of the interior. And I recommend doing that 
you know, after every pull, you don't want the bottom of your pot getting saturated. I'm gonna run some water down the wall with my sponge, just right down the inside of the wall, the outside of the wall, and then I'm gonna pick that water up right on the bat. And then again, I'm just going to push out until I see a bump happen here. Right, there's the bump for my inside fingers, just pushing out into the wall. Then I'm gonna come up under that bump. And what's happening here is the clay is forced to travel this like little bit longer route. Instead of it being, sque instead of squeezing and moving straight up, what I'm doing is offsetting. So the clay has to go around the corner here, right? Like this. And that's where the actual stretching happens so that the height, so that you can get the pot to be taller. Right, so don't squeeze, offset. It's much more efficient. Okay, I'm running a little water down the wall, inside and outside. And again, I'm going to push out from the inside and follow the bulge on the outside with my knuckle. I'm bringing it right up to the rim and I'm going to pop. Do you see how these throwing lines right up here at the top are very tight together? Um, so what I've done here is reduced the amount of surface area touching the clay. So when I'm down here, I'm using like more of my knuckle. When I'm up here, it's, it's weaker. So it can twist if I pull on it too hard while I'm throwing. Um, so what I do is I turn my knuckle in slightly. So instead of being on the pad here, I'm actually just on the edge of my knuckle. So it goes like this and then turn like this. And what that does is it reduces um, the friction and lets you continue to pull even though the wall is getting weaker. So, last thing I'm going to do here, this is just about pulling, um, knuckle pulling specifically. So last thing I'm going to do here is just run a rib down the wall and I'm just pushing out into the wall with um, my inside fingers. I run a little water down the inside of the pot and on the outside of the pot I'm just scraping away the slip. Allows you to work on it for longer. Uh, without the wall softening and it leads to like a cleaner surface for glaze decoration and all kinds of different things so so use a sheet metal rib to scrape this video isn't specifically about ribbing but um i just want to mention it it's a useful very useful uh, thing to do especially right after you're finished pulling so i'm going to um cut this pot in half i'm actually going to start right on the bat and come across till I get to my bat pins like this and then just come straight up there we go and now I'll just take this half away okay so you can see here down towards the bottom this is our cylinder and this is our cylinder and what's happening in the middle here is um, this is just where the clay is being offset so I'm pushing out with my inside fingers my first finger supported by my ring finger and then my knuckle is underneath so I'm like causing the clay to go further or to move through this path this sort of winding path between my knuckle and my first finger so by causing the clay to do that and then come back into a cylinder shape as it's tracking up the pot that's what causes it to get taller so you're stretching the clay by causing it to travel a longer route um, around your fingers. Really, really different than like squeezing on the wall and expecting it to act like a, wa like a water balloon. You know, you squeeze the water balloon and then the other part of the balloon pops up. That doesn't work so good with clay. I mean, there are moments that are like really small scale types of throwing where you would just squeeze the wall. But this offsetting technique is really good. Like you really wanna, wanna work on this. So come across the bottom, make the bump, carry it up, come underneath, and cause the clay to travel that longer path. Okay, I hope that was like a good um, way for you guys to have a visual um, reference for knuckle pulling. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching my video on knuckle pulling. Knuckle pulling is great for cylinders, shapes that have a flat bottom and straight walls. Thanks for watching.